How would you describe Muse's music? Anthemic? Grandiose? Sophisticated? What about emotional? Of course it's fair to say that fans of Muse will experience emotions while listening to their music, but the music itself isn't personal music aiming to relate to us. Muse deal much more in the political, in the world around us, in conspiracy theories and questions of reality. On their 2015 album Drones, they went to something of an extreme, perhaps intentionally creating a cold and detached listening experience, one to match the themes within the music. This is the sound we know Muse for, and it is the sound that propelled them into playing huge stadium tours where they could create a live show that matches the ambition and grandiosity of their music. But it took time for Muse to line up all of their cards correctly, and indeed, listening to their first album, while many of the pieces were in place already, their approach to recording was really quite different. Released in 1999, the songs on Showbiz had critics making many a comparison to Radiohead. Indeed, both bands' vocalists are heavily influenced by the singer Jeff Buckley, and notably his expressive use of falsetto. Plus, both bands aren't afraid to dig out sophisticated and unusual chords, harmonies that can challenge more casual listeners of music. In early interviews, Muse were unfazed by these comparisons, and, looking into the behind the scenes of showbiz, you can understand why, with this album's producer being John Leckie, producer of Radiohead's own album, The Bends. It's easy to forget that recording an album is difficult, especially if you've never done it before. There's this idea that songs appear spontaneously, like the artist is just a beacon to some kind of higher power. A notion that's backed up when you hear stories such as the legendary Paul McCartney having the superlative song Yesterday come to him in a dream. But this is the exception to the rule. When songwriting, there is a certain level of skill involved. A skill in choosing the correct chords, when to apply and when to relieve tension. There needs to be an awareness in your lyric writing. What kind of words are you going to pair up with this music? And it's not just the writing. You have to think about the sound that you're after. Consider this. Both an indie artist and a hard rocker use the electric guitar, but the sounds that come out of their amplifiers couldn't be any more different. And then of course there's the matter of production. You need to make sure that all of the different elements in your song come together coherently. Even if your song isn't aiming for the broadest of commercial appeal, it still needs to sound pleasing to the listeners within your target audience. I'd like to take a moment to share with you an experience of my own. You see, I love making these video essays and researching my favourite artists, but they are to an extent a means to an end, as I also wish to showcase to you my own original music. Right now I'm working on an original song named Those Simple Moments, and I'm doing so with a new producer. Someone who by no means is a big name, but is established enough to be doing it as his full-time occupation. This means that he has an incredible knowledge of recording techniques and understands how songs are put together. He's been an incredible guiding light throughout the process and has been someone who can help me make informed decisions. For example, I didn't have much of an idea of what the drums should sound like, but I knew that I could show him some of the songs that were really appealing to me right now and that he would be able to help me work out the sound that I need from that. Before making Showbiz, Muse put out two EPs under the guidance of a man named Paul Reeve. These EPs were designed to showcase Muse to prospective record labels. However, recording them may have also been the experience Muse needed to take all of their wild styles and influences and finesse them into a coherent whole. But while guiding the band members into creating the best possible product, one thing he was really drawn to was showcasing the emotion of the songs and being sure that the band could really dig into that. Indeed, the process of making these EPs would have been highly influential to the making of Showbiz, and perhaps that explains why the performances across the songs on the album sound so overtly passionate and expressive. While future Muse albums would be more technical and precise, especially in the approach to the vocals, on the debut, there is more of a focus on the emotion and the humanity being put across. Talking about their earliest professional recordings, singer Matt Bellamy said, I hear two things. 
I hear the development of what Origin would go on to be from all the things that were excluded, and then the development of what Showbiz would be from all the things that were included. We were relying a bit more on the producers and their ideas, and there was the general feeling that the heavy stuff was not good or relevant. In the process of making those first two EPs, certain elements of our style were excluded for being too prog, too dramatic, too silly, too funny, too heavy, or too American sounding. We ruled everything out apart from the kind of songs that were a bit more emotional in structure and a bit more earnest. The first album is painfully earnest in spots. Through recording their first album, and indeed the EPs leading up to it, Muse learnt two very important lessons. The first is that having a good producer on board can help you hone your sound, and is an essential person to have in the room through every decision-making process. But while that is true, the second lesson is to always trust your gut. Clearly, Muse omitted certain parts of their sound to create a more coherent record, but the experience of making that album and then promoting it later on led the band to come into the Origin of Symmetry sessions later on more assertive and prepared to stand up for more of the things they want. Muse's music is by no means devoid of emotion, but the experience listening to Showbiz is noticeably more emotional than that of their other albums. There are some bands who know what they want straight away, and so therefore recording their first album is just a case of knocking down pins until they're flat. But I think Muse needed that first album to really gain the experience and the confidence needed to come back fully formed for future music. Music that would go on to have a sizeable impact on rock music in the 21st century. Guys, Thank you so much for watching this video, and indeed, watching it through to the end. If you would like to check out some of my own music, I'll link it right here for you in the end screen. Or, if you'd like to check out one of my other video essays, that will be here next door. Until then, stay safe, stay well, and I hope to see you in another video.